Good morning. And then if you haven't already done so, uh, I invite you to grab a small fistful of, of, of palms and, and pass those down for the procession. And then there, uh, there's another, uh, uh, take them all. There we go. Yeah. And then we'll, I wasn't, but it works. <laughs> Laura, I'll take a bunch. There we go. Got some more? That's not enough for a procession. There we go. All right. All right. So uh, we'll begin at the top of page one of our bulletin. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. When Jesus and his disciples had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethpage in the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This, is to, this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did just as Jesus had directed them, and they brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the, in the highest heaven. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? And the crowds were saying, This is the prophet from this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you too. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love which you have redeemed uh, us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as king of kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life who lives and reigns in glory with you and the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Joe, do you have the remote? I do not. Okay. <laughs> then. Perfect. So as soon as Joe hits play, uh, we'll start singing Oh Glory, Lot and Honor, and you guys can make your way into the sanctuary.
Almighty God, whose most dear Son went up not to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the, the way of life and peace, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. This fine day. <clears throat> the first reading is from Isaiah chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he awakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled my beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. <laughs> Let's read the psalm together. Um, by verse, I'll begin. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance when they see me in the street. They avoid me. For I've heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. Lord. 
My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The New Testament reading is from the book of Philippians, chapter 2. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Uh, during Holy Week, we have a slightly different practice with the reading of the gospel. Uh, there will be no uh, sequence in today, and the customary responses are, are not used. Uh, you're invited to remain seated until uh, the reading mentions the approach to Golgotha, uh, at, which point, at which point I'll invite you to please stand. passion of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I betray Jesus to you? The priest said to him, Thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? Jesus said, Go into the city to a certain man and say to him, The teacher says my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus took his place with the twelve, and while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And the disciples became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. And Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. And Jesus replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, this is my body. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for the many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never drink of this fruit of the vine until that day in which I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to his disciples, you will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, Truly I tell you, this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. 
Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with the disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. And he began to be grieved and agitated. And then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, Jesus threw himself on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. And then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, Jesus went away for a second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, Jesus came and found the disciples sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time saying the same words. And then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While Jesus was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him was a large crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given the crowd a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him. At once Judas came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. And Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you are here to do. Then the crowd came and laid his hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on the sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my Father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled? which say it must happen in this way. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I sat in the temple preaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted Jesus and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, Peter sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus, so that they might put him to death. But they found none though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to Jesus, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? And the scribes and the elders answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in Jesus' face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Messiah, who is it that struck you? 
Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You were also with Jesus the Galilean. But Peter denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When Peter went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him and said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And again, Peter denied it with an oath, I do not know the man. After a little while, while the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then Peter began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And Peter went out and whipped, wept better, bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders were, uh, of the people were conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. Judas said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But the chief priests and the elders asked, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, Judas departed and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them in the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah, and they took 30 pieces of silver, the price on one whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people at Israel had set a price, and they gave them for a potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. When the Jesus was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But Jesus gave him no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. And so after they gathered, Pilate said to the crowd, Whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For Pilate realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests and the elders had handed Jesus over. While Pilate was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man. For today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And the crowd said, Barabbas. Pilate said to, him, said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then Pilate asked, why, what evil has he done? But the crowd shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the whole people as a whole answered, his blood be on us and on our children. So Pilate released Barabbas for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him, and they stripped Jesus and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head they put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him mock and mocked him, saying, 
Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on Jesus and took the reed and struck him on the head. And after mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. And as they went out, the soldiers came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they compelled this man to carry Jesus' cross. Would you now please stand as you are able? And when the soldiers came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull, they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over Jesus' head they put a charge against him which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with Jesus, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders, were mocking Jesus, saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For this man said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with Jesus also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some bystanders heard it, they said, the man is calling for Elijah. And at once one of them ran and got a sponge and filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After this resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this was God's son. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Um, I need to admit that there is a bit of bait and switch going on here this morning. Um, the email you were invited to, uh, the email you received invited you to the beginning of Holy Week with Palm Sunday. Even our bulletin says Palm Sunday. But if you look carefully at the Book of Common Prayer, today is formally called the Sunday of the Passion, Palm Sunday. And I say that not to make excuses for the length of our gospel lesson this morning, but to contextualize the week ahead. By design, this morning's service draws our attention not just to the expectant cries of the crowd joyfully welcoming Jesus to Jerusalem, it also calls our attention to the mocking jeers of those same city folk taunting Jesus on the cross. Many a preacher over the years has wondered at the baffling change of tones in the crowds of Jerusalem. 
In our first reading, they call out to Jesus saying, Son of David. What they are really saying is, crown him, crown him. In our second reading, the crowd cries out, crucify him, crucify him. But I would think that it is a mistake to presume that it was the crowd that changed their mind. Matthew is very clear that the entire city of Jerusalem is divided. Matthew describes Jesus entering Jerusalem with these words. Our first gospel lesson ends with this. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil and asking the question, who is this? But turmoil over what? Um, I have two guesses, and I'll admit that one is a work of imagination, um, and the other is deeply grounded in Matthew's gospel. But I would argue that both of them help us to understand the events of Holy Week. So let's begin with a small bit of imagination. Um, about 15 years ago, uh, two gentlemen by the name of Dominic Crossan uh, and Marcus Borg uh, wrote a book about Holy Week in which they imagine not one but two parades happening on this day. Um, now, the gospel is quite clear that Jesus would have entered Jerusalem from the east, from Bethpage. And that is not insignificant in Matthew's gospel. It is from the east, from that same direction, from whence the wise men came. It is from the east that John the Baptist called people into a new life of repentance, and it is from the east where the sun rises. But in the east, we see in Matthew's gospel a procession of peasants and regular folk following a miracle worker and teacher of great renown riding into the city on a donkey. And here's where we kind of fill in the gaps with a little work of imagination. What Crossan and Borg imagined happened on that same day, what gives rise to Matthew describing a city in turmoil, is that there was a second parade coming into Jerusalem from the west. And leading that parade was Governor Pontius Pilate coming into Jerusalem to oversee and to protect the citizens of Jerusalem from unrest, from division, maybe even from revolution. He was coming from his home, his governor's palace in Caesarea Maritima, riding in not on a donkey, but on a war horse, flanked not by common folks, but as the head of a column of imperial cavalry and soldiers. When Matthew says the city was in turmoil, what we can imagine is a city divided. On one hand, we have imperial, political, and military power. And on the other hand, we have a spiritual power which seeks to invert expectations and sees kindness, meekness, and love as the source of all power. Matthew is absolutely right to say that this is a city in turmoil. What we are being asked in this work of imagination is to choose how does this world operate? Is it through power or is it through love? That is the question we can ask through this work of imagination. But I want to return to the Gospel of Matthew as it is presented to us and to look at the bedrock facts which Matthew gives us. And when we do that, we have to start with the sad realization that the word turmoil is not the best translation. The Greek word, the original word in Matthew's gospel, is isesthe. 
That is the same Greek root that gives us the word seismic. And I want to call your attention to that very particular detail. It is not just an emotional turmoil that we find Jerusalem. For in Matthew's world, the city of Jerusalem is physically quaking, rumbling as the earth beneath it tries to settle on this same very question, how does the world operate? Is it through power and might, or is it in service and in love? Because it isn't just the earth that is quaking. What is crystal clear to me and what it is fascinating, absolutely fascinating, I wish I didn't, I came up with this idea earlier than 9 o'clock last night. This turmoil, this quaking, appears right before what? The quaking is related to the question, who is this? The earth is rumbling at the question, who is this? And the initial response is, this is Jesus of Nazareth. As I said, this is the beginning of Holy Week. The formal day today is the Sunday of the Passion. What we are going to see in the Gospel of Matthew over the next several days is the answer to this question. Who is this? What Matthew will answer that with is a series of incredible teachings in which Jesus is shown to be the ultimate guide, the ultimate teacher, the ultimate authority on the divine and scripture and tradition. Jesus is the authority, the spiritual authority. That is the answer to the question, who is this? But Jesus is more than a renowned scholar. He is also a person of intense spiritual power. We see in this last week, Jesus not only teach with authority, we see healings, we also see Jesus curse a fig tree. And in Matthew, that tree up and dies immediately. All of Holy Week, I would suggest, everything Jesus does in the city of Jerusalem during Holy Week is an attempt to answer this question, who is this? But I want to bring your attention back to the word turmoil. What happens at the moment of Jesus' death in Matthew's Gospel? Matthew is the only one of our four Gospel writers who says that at the moment of Jesus' death, there is an earthquake. When Jesus enters Jerusalem, we have the word turmoil, the same word we get, the word seismic. We see the earth buckling over the question and the debate, who is this? But at the moment of Jesus' death, we have not only another earthquake, a perfect bookend to Holy Week, but we have the soldier at the foot of the cross answer once and for all and without any doubt or equivocation, this is God's son. The answer, who is this? The final revelation of Christ's identity marked by an earthquake that had been rumbling underneath the city of Jerusalem for a week is finally answered in the affirmative, this is 
God's son. And if we need to go back to ask ourselves the original question that, was, that had sent Jerusalem into such turmoil, how does the world operate? Who runs and who rules this world? There are two answers that we are given to choose from. One is military and political power. The other is service and love. Matthew shows these two worldviews as being diametrically opposed to one another. They are so at odds with one another that the debate is literally shaking the foundations of the earth. But what we see in Matthew's gospel unequivocally is not just the identity of who this Jesus of Nazareth is, but also the answer to the question, how does the world work? This world will not be ruled at the tip of a sword. This world will not be ruled by bullying, or coercion, or military, or political power. This world will be served by and inherited by the meek. What Jesus spent his whole life doing was inverting our understanding and our expectation for what does God actually care about. What we see in Holy Week is the answer to the question, how does this world operate and how should we operate within it? We are called to model our lives after Jesus of Nazareth. To look at the world with a plain set of expectations, with a set of desires that we would like to unfold but as much as we want this supposed future to happen, we have to answer or ask our, and direct our prayers in the same way that Jesus did. Not as we would do, but as you will. That is the ultimate great good news of Holy Week. We know who Jesus was, what Jesus did, and how Jesus asks us to live. Anybody who's taken middle school earth science knows that earthquakes are the uh, function of two tectonic plates meeting with pressure, right? Earthquakes are when we have that pressure kind of slip and release. What we see on Good Friday, what we see on the Passion, is that the pressure, the tension, the being torn between two worldviews is finally and ultimately let go. We can respond to the identity of Christ by living as Christ asked us to live by knowing that the world operates from, by, through, and with God's love. That is the good news. It is earth-shaking good news. It is the kind of news that shakes not just the foundations of this earth, but the foundations of all of creation to know who is this, this is God's Son. Amen.
victims of the tornadoes. To the people of Nashville. Lord, have mercy. 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 Almighty and ever-living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and share also in his resurrection through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, uh, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. So with, let us share that peace with one another. Good morning. Peace. Peace. Peace, Joseph. Thanks, yeah. Good morning, peace. Peace, Craig. Did you get that video? Okay, did it? Okay, great. Good morning, peace. Peace. Susan, peace. Peace. Great seeing you. Peace, Caitlin. Peace. Oh, come on. With the FRC group? Yeah. Good. Hi. Peace. Hello. Peace. 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 Say peace. Come on, Kendall. Peace. Come on, peace. Let me grab this just in case. Uh, just a, a couple of announcements. Uh, the first is, uh, of course, uh, uh, invitation uh, to all the events of Holy Week. Uh, just as a reminder, on Wednesday night, we have our last uh, Lenten book club reading. Uh, that'll be 7 o'clock on Zoom. Uh, at 6 o'clock here at church on Thursday, we have our Monday Thursday service, a uh, service that remembers uh, the institution of uh, the Sacrament of Communion. Uh, it can Monday, Thursday is the first of what we call the three great days. Uh, if you were to translate that into Latin, it would be the tridium. Uh, we call it the tridium. Um, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Holy Saturday are uh, the three highest, holiest days in the church calendar. Um, what's, what's fascinating to note is that there is no end of any of those services. The service that begins on Thursday does not actually find its end until Easter Sunday. Uh, and in that, we can draw a great amount of meaning uh, that the story doesn't end until it ends well. Uh, to uh, quote Julian of Norwich, uh, all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. Uh, the story doesn't end until it's good news. Uh, and that certainly uh, is a wonderful place to start Holy Week. Um, next Sunday is uh, Easter Sunday. Uh, we invite you to come. Uh, please enjoy the, the celebration. We've got uh, a return to major key music, um, some of our favorite hymns. Uh, we're also going to have a baptism. Um, and of course, baptisms mean sheet cake. 
Uh, so it will be a, a great and wonderful Sunday. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday as well. Um, after Easter, there's going to be a couple of um, kind of training events. I just kind of wanted to um, kind of jog your memory towards that. Um, after Easter, you've got uh, a month until I go on sabbatical. Um, so we're going to be doing some trainings on how to set the altar, uh, some workshops on uh, selecting music for the summer months while I'm gone. So uh, just keep an eye out for them. Uh, it will be an important way uh, to get involved and to help take care of the church uh, while I'm um, graciously accepting your offer of rest and sabbatical. So um, I think that just about does it for announcements for right now. Uh, are there any birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate? Oh, Susan, great. And Susan's back after playing grandma to a two-year-old, so, so prayers of restoration are, of course, appropriate. So, did you learn anything new about two-year-olds? Have they changed at all? Okay. Always the same, always the same. Let's pray for Susan. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless and guide her wherever she may be. Strengthen her when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if she falls. And in their hearts may thy peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Susan, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Happy birthday. That's great, Susan. Yeah. Good to have you back as well. Um, with that, uh, ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts. Amen. I invite you at this time to please stand as you are able for the singing of the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Father, Son, Our service this morning continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, which can be found in your bulletin or on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven 
who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night before he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. 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 Christ, the bread of heaven. 
Christ, the bread of heaven. Thy cross, 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 the bread of heaven. Cross the bread of heaven. Thy cross the bread of heaven. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this, your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross. He lives and reigns. 